What's up everybody, Kellen from Action Backers here. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm super excited because today I'm gonna to show you how to use the power of Python and an awesome library called Pandas to scrape historical NHL data and create a winning data set. Whether you're a hockey fan or you just wanna learn more about web scraping and data analysis, this tutorial is gonna be for you. By the end of the video, you'll be able to scrape data and start building your own data sets. So follow along as I walk you through the process step by step and don't forget to leave a comment down below if you found this helpful or if you have any questions or suggestions. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here's a quick snapshot of what we're essentially gonna, the end product. You can see here uh, we have a list of all the games and a bunch of advanced stats, tons of advanced stats, and it's game by game. So this is beginning of last season, and as you can see, it's every single game. So you can imagine how powerful this is if you're looking to build a regression model, more data is better, and this is just one season's worth. There's thousands of games here. You can do this, you know, five seasons type thing, or 10 seasons, and this is just a, an awesome way to do it and minimal coding required. You, once, once you see how uh, simple it is, you'll, you'll be surprised. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to install a library called Anaconda. And we're using Python, the programming language Python, but we're gonna use a package called Anaconda. And this is really helpful because it comes preloaded with a lot of different uh, modules and, and helpers uh, that is really great for, for data science and this specific purpose. So all you're gonna do is go to the, the Anaconda site, which I'll leave down below, and then you can just click download. Um, if you're on Mac or Windows, and you're just gonna wanna download it, you can use the graphical installer and click through. Now, something to note, if you go, and I'll leave a link down below, I wrote a blog post on how to do this, and I've laid out step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually install Anaconda. So read the blog post if you want those step-by-step -step instructions. I'm not gonna get into it here because it it will take too long, but the resources are down below and all you need to do is click on the installer and you're good to go. So once you've done that and you've clicked on the installer, you're going to want to open Jupyter Notebook and you'll see in your, in your graphical interface that Jupyter Notebook is available to you. Alternatively, you can also use your terminal as I'm doing here. All you have to do is type in Jupyter Notebook once you're in the, the directory you wanna be in and it will start running for you. And then from there, it should open up a browser window and we can get going. But again, in the graphical interface, if you just click the button, it'll say Jupyter Notebook, it'll do the exact same thing. So you don't have to worry about if you're if you're not comfortable using a terminal. And so when we get into Jupyter Notebook, it'll look a little something like this. You can see I'm already, I've created a directory called Python Projects, which I'm already inside of. Um, so you likely won't have anything here. I already put a couple projects in here, which is why you're seeing that. But essentially this will be blank. And then all you're gonna wanna do is click click new and then we're just gonna create a new Python 3 uh, kernel here. So click that and it will load a new cell. So the first, the very first thing you can do if you want to is rename your notebook. So let's do that now. And you can call this whatever you'd like. Something like NHL scraper probably makes the most sense. And we're just gonna rename that. So now this is blank. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to actually install a few dependencies. And these dependencies are just helpers, they're, they're libraries that um, people smarter than us have already pre-built and it does a lot of the work under the hood for us. So the first one, the main one, is called pandas. So all we're gonna do is type import pandas and then we're just gonna use an alias and an alias is just a way that you can essentially rename a library to use it in your code base without having to retype the full name. So common convention that most people who are using pandas use is you would just say as, and as is telling the system that we're gonna create an alias, and then you would just call it PD. Now you could call this my awesome 
thing if you wanted to that's totally fine so whatever you name this is up to you however if you call it my awesome thing then anytime we want to use pandas throughout our code you always have to use my awesome thing which would be very annoying and at that point you'd be better off just leaving it called pandas so we're going to stick with pd and then we're just going to hit enter and that's just going to give us a new line so hitting enter in this cell doesn't do anything it doesn't run our code all it's going to do is give us a new line and i'm going to zoom in a bit and hopefully you can see this okay so there's one now we're going to end up using a few other packages pandas is definitely the main one so i'm just going to i'm just going to import the other packages and we'll we'll sort of talk through them as as they come up so the next one is just import date time and we're not going to rename this one this one the next one is also we're going to it's a little bit different because we're not going to import the entire package we're just going to import one module so we're going to say from random which is the package and from random we want to import rand int and rand int is just a way that we can generate random integers and we'll cover this later as to why we're going to need this and then also we're going to do from time and and we're going to import sleep and this is going to be useful down the road once we get into building the scraper and you'll see why but so this just allows us to essentially pause our program for a determined amount of time um, which will be important because we want to make sure things are loaded and things like that and then lastly um, we're going to import os which is just it essentially can read your operating system files and this is going to be helpful for when we're actually exporting things to csv so that's something i i should cover we're going to be exporting our data to a CSV file so you can use it in Excel or Google Sheets. And this is a really great and simple way to warehouse your, your data. If you wanted to, if your data set got, like say you're like, you know, 20, uh, 20 seasons worth of data or 10 seasons worth of data, there's thousands of games each year. So there's thousands of data points. You could use a, a database like a SQL database. I'm not going to go into that right now, but the process is almost the exact same. Instead of importing it to a CSV, we would import it to a database, but the, the functionality and the way that you write the code is virtually identical. So if you wanted to see how to do it in, in a database itself, you would probably first want to make sure that you know how to set up a database, which can be, that's the most complex part. So for now, I suggest just sticking with the CSV because you're going to be using a CSV to run all of your regression tests anyways. So it makes, makes the most sense. So that was a bit of a ramble, but now, okay. So we've, we've written these packages here right now. They're not doing anything. So to initialize these packages, what we actually have to do is you can either click run, which will run the code in this cell or a shortcut, press shift and enter and that will run it. So as you get going, it, you'll find it's easier rather than mousing up and clicking run. You just hit, you just hit shift enter and it runs and you can see a little asterisk happen. And now this says one, if there were errors, they would show up underneath. So we have no errors. So we're in good shape. So that's great. So now that we've got all of these things imported, we can actually look at starting to scrape the data and we're going to be scraping data from two sites and if you think if you see things moving here that's just because um, Jupyter Notebooks is actually really awesome so it will auto save at regular intervals so you can you can manually save if you want but it will auto save your work as you go through which is really awesome so sorry as I was saying we're going to be scraping data from two sites so the first one we're going to gather the actual historical dates that games were played. And then using those dates, we will scrape another site to get the data that we need. And the reason that we do that is because the NHL season and any sports season isn't played 365 days a year, right? It's played roughly six, seven months out of the, out of the year and not every day. And so we could theoretically run a scraper that just checked every single day of the year. But as we get into this, you'll see that would use a lot of computing power and a lot of wasted resources. And depending on the site, it would open up the door for some potential errors. 
So instead what we're going to do is we're just going to get a list of all of the game dates for a season and then we're only going to check and get data returned for those dates. So it makes things much simpler. And if you're lost, just follow along with me. I promise it'll start to make sense. So before we actually look at scraping the data, one other important sort of caveat to make. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to be using something called PD dot, which is remember PD from pandas, PD dot read HTML. And what this does is it's a function from the pandas library and it's used to parse HTML tables from a web page into a list of what is called a data frame, which is essentially you can think of it similar to like a CSV. So if you've ever used Google Sheets and you use the import HTML function, it's very similar to that. It's different from building a web scraper, a traditional web scraper, in that it's specifically designed to extract tables from HTML, whereas a web scraper is a more general tool and it can be used to extract any data from a web page. The trade-off here and the key advantage to using this function is that it's much easier to use, um, especially for those starting out, than building a web scraper from scratch. As you'll see as we go get into this more, it requires minimal code to use and we can handle a wide variety of HTML table formats. The drawback is it's not as flexible as building a custom web scraper. And if your data isn't contained in an HTML table, which um, sometimes, you know, fan graphs uh, for baseball uh, stats, some of their tables are in an HTML table, but some of them are dynamically generated using JavaScript, which we're not getting into right now. But if that's the case, this particular method won't work. So maybe down the road, I'll, I'll show you how to build the other kind of scraper, but this is still gonna be very powerful as you'll see. And depending on the sport and the sites you're using, it's gonna do a lot of the work for you anyways, and you might not even need to use that other kind of scraper, okay? So that's just a quick note. So to get the historical dates, we're going to use hockey reference. So the URL, for hockey reference is this and i will link this in the uh, description down below i will also it's also in the blog post but essentially hockey reference it's just a exactly what it sounds like i'm sure you've seen it before it's got a ton of different stats everything you could really want from uh, just like a historical games perspective hockey reference has so the full url that we're going to use because remember we're after the dates is actually going to be this and so you can see it's just forward slash leagues forward slash nhl and we're using 2022 because we want to scrape all of the data from last season and how hockey reference does it is whatever this number is references the second half of the season so the 2021 2022 season use 2022 if we were to use 2023 then it would just give us this season to date even though it's not 2023 yet so if we pull this up now you can see it gives us the regular season and it gives us every single game the score whether the game went to an overtime or a shootout and a bunch a bunch more data the the attendance things like that but really again all we're after is the date and the, the other thing to note if we scroll all the way down you'll see these are all the regular season games right so there's lots and lots of them but if we scroll down far enough you'll see they have the playoffs as well so the playoffs are in a separate table and we'll run into this in a few minutes but we're only looking at the regular season if you wanted to to do this for the playoffs you could but i think using the regular season makes makes more sense for what we're after. So we have our URL. How do we get the data out? Well, first we're going to create a few variables and I'm just gonna delete this for now. A variable is just a way to store data. So in Python, pretty straightforward to declare a variable. So you could just say something like X equals five, Y equals hello, and Z equals one, two, Three. So here you can see X is uh, a number, Y is a string, and Z is an array. Um, in Python, it's called a list. In in other 
languages is called an array and an array can have different things so this is an array of numbers but you could have an array that has numbers and strings in it or just strings or boolean values like true false things like that that doesn't really concern us right now but the point is this is a way of of storing two values so you, what you could do is say x is five and y is two and z is x times y and if we print z and run our code it will give us 10 right so it's just a way to store things and say we needed to use x a whole bunch of different places in our code then we could use x all over the place and then if we needed to update the value we only need to update the value once rather than plugging five in all over our code base so it's just a way to store things in memory and make things more simple so i'm just going to delete this cell and all i did is i just hit escape so it was blue and then i just pressed d twice and that deleted the cell you don't have to do that but it's something that i i wanted to do so the first variable that we're going to create we're going to call it url and this is going to be equal to our url that we looked at but it's very important we need to wrap this in quotations and you can use single quotes or double quotes that doesn't matter except you can't mix them um, so you can't use single quotes one spot in on one side and, and double quotes on the end but we need to wrap this because this is a string and if we don't wrap this we'll get errors our code won't run all right so this is the first variable that we're going to create and then the next variable we're going to just call it dfs because we're creating a data frame this is how we're going to instantiate it but our final is going to just be called df but because we have to do some processing i'm just adding an s on the end uh, again what you call this doesn't matter as long as you reference it correctly throughout your code and so here we're going to use the pd.read html that we talked about before and this is a function and here you can pass your arguments so inside this we're going to pass our url now this is the exact same doing this is the exact same as if we just copied this whole thing here and pasted it in you could definitely do that but we're programming we're lazy and we want to make things as reusable as possible so typically you would put things in a variable and then if we needed to use this url in more than one place it's there for us so we're going to do that and now if we um, hit enter and again remember enter doesn't run our code if we type dfs and now hit shift enter to run our code we're going to get a bunch of data but it's kind of ugly and the reason for this is remember back when we were looking at the website we had two tables we had the regular season and then we had the playoff table right so right now it's just pulling in a bunch of the data or all the data from both of those tables and it's just sort of like throwing it up there and it's fine but it's not really useful to us so what we can do is we can now create a new variable. So I'm just going to delete this S from the end. And we're going to say DF is equal to DFS, which is what we just call here and what we saw here. And then we're going to use bracket syntax. And we're going to just grab the, the zeroth index, the first index. So in most programming languages, um, counting or indexing starts at zero instead of one. So if you want the first instance of something, you would say zero. And actually, so before I go on, let's oops, let's uh, just comment that out. And in Python, a, a hashtag here or pound sign that just denotes a comment. Um, and so this will you can you can add like human readable text if you want. But anything that starts with this, it means it won't actually be run. So you won't see anything. So if we just for a quick example to, to show you what I'm talking about, if we say uh, my list is equal to and let's just create a list and call it apple, banana and pear. If we wanted to access apple, most folks starting out would do something like this uh let's just do we'll just print it and we'll say my list they would say well i want the first the first object so i'm just going to say one but if you do this it actually prints banana and that's because counting starts at zero so it'd be zero one two right so if we wanted apple then it would actually be this 
Okay, so it's it's again, it's similar. If you've used Google Sheets, the import HTML, um, you will have come across this where oftentimes you want to reference the first table, then you use zero. Okay, so now all we've done is we want the first table from from uh, our, our data frame. And now if we print, if we uh, run our code again, without us having to do any formatting or anything, it's put it into this nice table. So now we're really getting somewhere. Um, you can see it's it's got like the zebra stripes, um, it's formatted the headers, and then um, of course there's tons and tons of data. So to show it in a way that makes sense, that's what these dots are. That's just all the data in between. So it shows the first the first um, five and the last five instances. You could also just do um, t uh, I think it's just head. Um, yeah, so if you do dot head like this with the with the parentheses, this will return the first five records, right? One, two, three, four, five, and you can see here's our zero indexing. And if you do tail, tail, I think, yes, it will return just the last five. So this can be useful if you know you have a large data frame and you just want to make sure you're getting data. Oftentimes it's convention, you just do something like this. For now, we can leave it, it doesn't matter because uh, we're going to get rid of this anyways. So. Now we have our, our data coming through and that's awesome. The next step is we actually need to get the data because remember that's that's what we're here for. We want the dates. And so to, to do that, we're going to use a function uh, called uh, PD. So again, we're, re we're using pandas again. This is all built into the pandas, which is awesome. We don't have to do any of this ourselves. And then it's just, uh, it's called to uh, date time. And it's again, it's just a function and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, a new variable and we're going to call it dates and it will be equal to PD dot to date, oops, to date time. And in the parentheses, we're going to format, um, an existing column. So we're going to format the date column, uh, to a usable format. And then, so we'll just say format, uh, equals, and I'm just gonna copy this because I have it saved like that. And this is just a standard uh, ISO formatting uh, for date time. Um, so this is like year, 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 uh, month, month, day, day. And then we're gonna say dot uh, DT dot date. And so now if we look at dates, sweet, we have a bunch of the dates, which is great. The issue though, that I'm sure you can start to see is there were two games on the 12th of October. So we have 12, 12, and then there were more games on the 13th. So these aren't unique dates, right? And obviously we want unique dates. So to fix that, we're actually just gonna override our dates variable. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna leave it like this. And then now we're gonna say, so we'll leave what we did up, up here but now we're going to just say dates now equals uh, PD. So again, we're using pandas uh, built in. And this time we're going to use something called series. And this is just going to make a series out of the dates. So we're going to pass in the dates variable. And then we're going to just say drop duplicates, which is exactly what it sounds like. So it's, it's only going to return unique dates. And then we're just going to make that uh, to list so we can use this in a list uh, because we, we want it in a list. So now if we return dates, you can see we have successfully returned all of the unique dates from that season. So this is really great. So now that this part's basically done. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Uh, we don't need this right now. Like we don't need to call it. Our um, code is getting a little long to read on the screen. Um, and then this was just an example. So I'm just going to delete this for now. If you ever delete it and you're not sure what to do and you don't want to rerun this, but you need a new cell, you just come up to the top and click on the, oops, and click on the plus button. And this will insert a cell below and then you get back. So to recap, we have imported a bunch of function, a uh, bunch of uh, packages, sorry. And now we've created a list of unique dates using the one URL. And again, to get all of that, all of those dates in a way we need, it took us one, two, three, four, five lines of code. 
So we're well on our way. This is great. <laughs>